Welcome to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Our mission is to bring you discussions on a wide array of topics in the coaching world to grow players on and off the court. You can connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and also reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Now, here's your host, Coach Mike Hernandez. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us here for another episode. Wherever in the world you're listening to us from, whatever platform you're listening to us on, as always, uh, thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you for kind messages, the emails, all the questions that you sent our way, and checking this episode out. Because if you've checked this episode out, that means that you have an interest in our youth players, which I think is really exciting. Um, It's so important, as, as everyone listening knows, to have our players engaged at the youth level and and really learn how to love the game of basketball at a young age. And then those players then grow and hopefully continue to love and continue to learn the game and continue to play it when they're older. And that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on kind of the concept of engaging youth players, getting players excited to play basketball, while also teaching them, obviously, how to play the game and um, all the great things that come with that. So um, if you're looking to get involved in it, this this will be an awesome episode to listen to. Or if you just need some ideas about what are some things that maybe will engage some of the youth players that you work with, uh, this is going to be a great episode too. Of course, I don't do this alone. I'm very happy to be joined by a, a very busy individual. And it was really funny looking at, at, at your byline, Coach, because it said, Ohio Hoopsters, Bolts, Boys, 2033. And my mind couldn't even process that year but I'm very happy to be joined by coach Kyle Kern today coach thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us how you doing I'm doing great it's my pleasure to be here I'm really excited what a wonderful resource you have going here for coaches and happy if I can shed some light on my experiences thus far so thanks for having me on Uh, absolutely coach let's start with your your basketball journey I know that that you played basketball uh, uh, quite a bit and and played at a high level so so what was your basketball journey where did that take you and then ultimately uh, what got you into coaching on the on the youth side that you do right now Sure. Yeah. I, I actually grew up uh, as a coach's kid. My dad coached my sister and I uh, really from the time we started through eighth grade. So I, and my sister's older, so I would call myself kind of a gym rat. I, <laughs> I picked up the love of the game by going to practices and watching her being the ball girl and just kind of immersing myself in basketball. I loved the game from an early age. Um, grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and went on to play collegiately. Uh, I started my career at University of New Haven in Connecticut and, and transferred to Ashland University in Ohio. Actually, Ashland just won their third uh, Women's National Championship for Division mm-hmm. Two, so nice. I got to give a go Eagles. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was a, a fantastic experience. One of the you know best experiences of my life was playing for Ashland. I really played for um, a legendary coach in women's basketball, uh, Sue Ramsey, um, and it was a, a great experience. I so many of the lessons that I learned from playing uh, college basketball time management, getting through tough situations, being part of a team, being a leader, um, just intangible lessons have helped me in my life and my career. I'm an attorney now, which is kind of funny. I always (laughs) thought I would have a career in in athletics, but I kind of took a detour and um, have been a litigator most of my legal career. And and now I'm in-house counsel for an electric power company in Ohio. But um, you know, basketball is in me and my son uh, caught the bug a few years ago and I started getting in um, to coaching. And I've always had an interest in coaching. I think, uh, you know, back when I was playing for Ashland and and New Haven, I would uh, be a camp counselor for different um, uh, basketball camps across the country mm-hmm. and uh, really enjoyed uh, being a, an instructor and uh, loved going to camps as a kid too. But now I'm, uh, I've got my own group of eight-year-old second graders and I, I coach a boys travel team here in Columbus, Ohio. And as, as you mentioned, you, you played at the, the collegiate level and I, I was just curious about 
you having an understanding of a game and, and playing basketball at such a high level, was it was it a challenge at all to translate kind of playing basketball at, at that level and, and, and kind of break it down and, and, and put it in a language that like eight year olds would be able to comprehend or understand? What, what was that process like? Yeah, you I mean, you hit a really um, good point. Um, I I would say that just because uh, someone has played at a high level, it won't automatically translate and mean that they're going to be able to be a good coach. And I mean, I think the flip side of that is true as well. You don't have to play at a high level to be a good coach. But mm -hmm. I think the same kind of dedication and discipline that makes you successful at anything, whether it's playing basketball or in your career, um, applies. Even if you're uh, coaching at a young level and you have to really – um, immerse yourself and be a student of the game again. And I, I found myself, um, you know, thinking of ways that I could teach uh, important skills, sometimes complicated skills, because even though my kids are eight-year-olds and second graders, they are playing at a high level, but they're still learning the game. Um, and I needed to be able to teach that in a way that they could understand. And um, so I've just been kind of watching a lot of uh, videos on YouTube, uh, listening to yeah. podcasts such as this one, reading everything that I can. And we are so lucky to live in the digital age where we have yeah. all of these resources really at our fingertips. So you can get as much, um, you know, different kinds of drills, watch coaches and different ways that they communicate it. And, you know, my that's what my dad did back when he coached us. I remember him getting the VHS tapes of Pat mm -hmm. Summit. And Pete Maravich, um, Homework Basketball is still one of my favorite series to this day. Um, Tanya Crevier, ba ball handling, you know. So I have really had to go back and kind of hone my skills of what I want to teach and, and what's a good way to do that. And I think, uh, you know, you want to have drills that with young kids that are competitive and fun. And you also want to make sure that you're instructing them, but there's not a lot of time where they're standing around. If they're standing around yeah. for a long time, they're going to get bored. You're going to lose their attention. Um, so you have to make sure that your practices move swiftly, that they're always busy, um, and that you're teaching it in a fun and competitive way. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of been my approach. <clears throat> and so this – uh, particular travel team, and I think that that you you mentioned that too. This is a, um, I guess I guess I'll, I'll say high level. Like there, there's a there's a significant amount of of kind of buy in by the parents. These are players, at least at least from my understanding, and I'll let you elaborate on it. Who have you know re relative to their age, quite a bit of a experience playing. Yes. Um, so this is our first year. Really, I think AAU across the country or travel ball. It starts in second grade. We're finding more that there's there's a lot more teams in third grade. So we're really on the early end. But these kids are. Um, this is a travel team. We kind of, we're we're staying around Ohio um, because mm -hmm. there is quite a bit going on just in our, our state. But these kids are dedicated. Um, you know, they tried out for this team. They many of them they play all year round. They love basketball on the same token. You know, I, I encourage them to play other sports as well. We try to work with uh, every kid if they want to play baseball. My son plays lacrosse, um, you know, soccer players, because I don't want them to, you know, feel like they can't uh, play basketball and they have to give up another sport to do it. I think it's important that kids get to do what they want to do. So we work around that, but we've had some really great experiences. We just, took the kids down to Gamebridge uh, Fieldhouse where the Pacers play. Oh, cool. And uh, they played a game before uh, the Pacers played the Pistons. And it was just an awesome experience. So these kids just love to hoop. And, um, you know, it's, it's awesome to see their enthusiasm at such a young age. But they really are, they're, they're skilled, you know, so... It's it's a balance, you know. Sometimes it's it's I can forget very easily that they're eight year olds, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, that they are, you know. So and and I think that that to to me that's that's an interesting dynamic in that you have um, the, these kids who who as you mentioned they lo they love playing they're they're very invested in playing but also at the same time they are kids so you almost have to go through this. Um, 
what could be a potentially difficult balance of you know making sure that it that they're learning and that that it's competitive and and it's something that they're they're getting a lot out of but at the same time understanding that at the end of the day they are eight years old and this does need to be like a fun and enjoyable experience and they shouldn't feel too stressed out while doing it right yeah and and i think a lot of that um you know it goes into our preparation and mm -hmm. our practices and um I, I, one thing that i focus on in our practice is is that every drill we do is competitive in nature because i want them to learn to always be t competing um so if there's a layup drill we're seeing if we can get eight in a row before we can switch to the other side if we play a a, a game um it's a drill called scores and stoppers because we like to emphasize that defensive stops are just as important as scoring. So they get a point for each. It's it's like one-on-one -on -one and we have a tournament to get to the ultimate scorer and stopper <laughs> of the of the practice. And I bring some, you know, rewards for the kids, a Gatorade, a pack of basketball cards, and they really enjoy it. We have a free throw champion every every practice. We get 10 free throws in and we we count them, we log them. And I think it makes it really fun for the kids, but they're also having fun competing. And when we get in those harder games, you know, the, it, the competition isn't, you know, a foreign topic to them because they're competing every day at practice. And that doesn't mean we win every game. We're playing up um, in some pretty competitive tournaments with some third grade teams who have been around the block a bit more than we have. And I think you just have to, um, you know, you're not going to win every game. And some of our games haven't been, um, you know, we, we've we've gotten beat pretty bad and, and that's OK. So long as we're learning something from it, you want to make sure that they're uh, focused on, you know, improving or, you know, in games where I know, you know, we were probably not going to beat this opponent. We set another goal. We want to hold them to eight points this half. We want to out rebound them by 10 rebounds like we want to usually every time I go into a tournament or a game, there's something I am really focusing on. And it's usually what we were working on that week in practice, uh, you know, beating a full court press or working on our full court man to man trapping press, you know, so you got to set different goals. It can't always just be winning and losing. And I think that the kids then, um, you know, won't be so caught up in that and, and they will still enjoy, um, you know, they enjoy competition. Yeah, and 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 I was curious about how, um, you know, a, a a kid would react when you know you're you're going up against a tough team and 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 it it doesn't look good on the scoreboard. I know that, you know, the the way my, my high school girls might react might be a little bit different. But have, have you found that by focusing more on the on the goal aspect of thing that 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 the kids have just kind of been able to just kind of bounce back or or not really worry about it or what's kind of like the vibe after you know maybe maybe a tough loss like that yeah that's a it's a really good point uh a good question um there's there's a couple things that are important about that first i think as a coach you can see you know even as 8 year olds okay the score isn't what we want it to be who's still who's still with me you know, who's still with their team, who's still focused, who's dialed in, who's still competing out there. Because, the, you know, there are some kids who they see the score and it's just it's it's overwhelming. And there's others who dig down deeper and they're, they're like, well, you know, we could still get back in this thing. So that's important. But, um, you know, also the goal setting does help. And I think I can say, I, I you know, and I do I, I mean this. I don't care what the score is. Yeah. I want us to work on our ball rotation and beating this man to man or this zone. I think that that team was playing the zone press oh, no. with ball rotation <laughs> and not trying to dribble through traps because we're not going to beat this pressure by dribbling through it. We're going to have to run our our press offense and rotate the ball and get our eyes up and and you know what, what can can we hold this team on the other end 
to eight points this half. And we did it. And there's been games that we um, have played and they've been close and we've been on the losing end and we've gotten another chance of that same team a week or so later and we've come back and won. And to me that that is, you know, we're improving. We are making steps. We're, we're even, you know, there's even improvement from one game in a day to the next game in the day with this group. Um, so that's, awesome, that's yeah. exciting to see. So I, I do think that, you know, they are able to um, – we're able to learn from it, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, if every game we're beating every opponent by 20 points, then, hey, we probably need to, you know, go somewhere. You know, we need to yeah, find yeah, some you got to challenge yourself in some way. Yeah, yeah so it's kind of – I was, I've told my parents and I've told the kids too, you know, we're going to have some ga games and we've had a lot of them that we're, we're winning by a large margin. We're going to have some other games where it's not going to be as easy and that's life and that's basketball. And so what, how can we be a better basketball player and a better basketball team every time we step on the court? So that's kind of our goal. Yeah. And, and it's, it sounds like your kids from, from, from what you mentioned, like they're, they're, they're able they're able to bounce back pretty quickly. It sounds like the environment's pretty positive to where they're not going to have their heads down for too long. And I think, I think that's good. I, I, I don't, I don't think it would be good for, for our young players to get so caught up in wins and losses at such a young age. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a really healthy mindset to have to get into. No. And I, you know, I, I don't, um, I don't emphasize the wins and losses, but one thing I do emphasize with them is the little things. And I think it's so important to stress with your players on any level that the little things matter. And um, because all of those little things, the time we didn't get on the floor for a loose ball, when we, when we didn't hit the boards hard, uh, when we didn't take care of the ball, uh, missing our layups and our free throws, um, when – when you add all the little things together, when we didn't sit down and slide our feet, instead we reach and we get cheap fouls, you know, mm -hmm. those become big things and those ultimately determine, you know, the outcome of a game. And I, there's actually a poem um, that I love and I, I've loved it my whole life. Okay. Um, it's called, it was only one possession. And, you know, I think it's good for any age to read it, but it, the essence of that poem is, you know, it was only one possession. Why'd my coach get so mad? Why'd they take me out of the game? You know, but then at the end, what a shame we lost by two because you realize the value of every possession. And, um, you know, so that's kind of what I stress with my, with my kids. Like you, you have to pay attention to the fundamental fundamentals. We've got to do the little things. The little things aren't always fun. It doesn't feel good to sit down in defensive stance no. you know yeah, yeah. i mean you, you we want we have the tendency to want to stand up as soon as our our player gives up the ball we're not on the ball anymore and we relax and that's when you get beat on a backdoor cut right so um you know it's kind of that constantly reminding them that every play matters basketball is such a fast sport that you have to focus because all of it adds up, right? And that yeah. that that will probably be reflected in the score. But um, as long as they're giving me, um, you know, their 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 best effort, you know, that's that's truly what I'm looking for as well. So no, that no, that, that that's awesome. I I, re I really like the way that you put that, and that, that's it's a cool poem too. It, yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. It, it would be one, uh, you know, your high schoolers would like. So I, I have a, I give my kids a, a playbook at the beginning of the season, a binder, like, like big, 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 big time basketball, you know, and um, mm -hmm. we put their plays in it so that they can study, um, you know, with the diagrams. Uh, I give them homework, basketball, different ball handling drills, mic and layups, just different drills that I want them to be working on at home. And that poem was part of it as well, because a nice. lot of these kids are, you know, working on their reading skills. So I, I thought that would be a good really one cool. for them to really practice cool. with. But yeah, it, the meaning of it is, um, is it, it means a lot. So by the time uh, th th this group has come to you, because it is a high level, I was curious, how many, how many coaches have they already had by the time they get to you? What, what would you say? What number are you kind of on the list of how many coaches they have had? She's, uh, you know, they might have had uh, some of these kids. May they could I could be like their sixth coach because a lot of these kids, um, 
I, you know, I've coached at some point, um, in, in our, uh, we have, it's, it's not a rec league. It's a competitive league. It's called the D league. It's the developmental league. And, and mm-hmm. everybody in Columbus, when you kind of are moving on from rec league in your neighborhoods goes to the D league and, um, they have a fall session, a, a spring session, a summer wow. session. So it just goes on and on. So these kids kind of play all year round. So, you know, they, they, they've had a number of coaches at this point. So when they're, when they, when they entered uh, kind of your travel team, what was like the feeling? What, what did you find that there was any, any nerves that they had? Were they just kind of ready to go? I guess the, the bigger overarching question was how much sort of trust did you feel like you had to develop with those, with, with those kids? Well, I think there was there was a, quite a bit of nerves, and I I would say I had nerves on my end too because um, you know this some of our kids have played um, uh, they kind of played in a competitive school ball league this past year. They played up in a third grade division, but some of them were playing D league, and in that age group, they were still. Um, I call it wristband land because in Ohio, we when we're teaching the kids how to play man to man, we match them up um, with different colored wristbands so they can find their player. And oh, so nice. yeah. ri- wristband land is a little bit different than uh, it's, it's a different pace than what we're doing right now. So I think there was quite a bit of nerves, you know, that we're at the very beginning of travel ball. I think we're all kind of trying to know what to expect and um you know quite frankly i didn't know i mean i it's been a while <laughs> since i was uh, a, an eight-year-old and you know <laughs> i was on the girl side and aau and back when i played didn't start until um well i 10 years old was it was usually when uh when f- girls were starting so eight-year-old you know is pretty young so mm. the, yeah there were nerves and we were all kind of trying to figure out i think what this was going to look like and um, how we could bring this team together. And I think, you know, the way that you do that is just by um, you got to build the team. They've got to learn to trust the team. They've got to want to be part of the team. You know, a lot of these kids are individually outstanding players, but it doesn't mean a lot if you can't come together and play team basketball. Um, you know, there are some teams that I think they do have, you know, a player who just dominates and does everything, but it's not going to be, um, you know, I, I'm not seeing as many of those teams now that we're at the travel level. You really have to have, you know, team basketball concepts. So, yeah. yeah. So were there, was there work then that you had to do to kind of build team building almost, uh, non-basketball related team building or or did the team building that you kind of uh, did was that was that all was that all basketball related most of it has been basketball related um you know some of the kids knew each other um That's because good, they had yeah. played together previously and most of them had played against each other in that in the D league that I mentioned so um ha- kind of knew each other um and we we have practices every week, so they are getting to know each other really well. But it, it is pretty cool because now, um, you know, there's been a few birthdays and they, oh, yeah. they're best friends. You know, they they all go to each other's birthday parties. <laughs> oh, and we went to Indiana um, for the Pacers. That was an awesome bonding experience. I imagine, yeah. And I think now, you know, we're really kind of, you know, moving ahead. So that is a really important thing. I think at any age is that you want your team to gel. You want team unity. You want them to like each other and be friends on and off the court, trust each other, you know, so it, it's important. Um, and I think the way that you do that on the court is by having them achieve those goals as a team in practice, you know, because when they have a layup goal, you know, we're trying to make eight uh, full court layups with moves in a row they're cheering for each other they're clapping for each yeah. other the enthusiasm building they want to hit that goal you know and they're doing it together and when we have a mic in um you know layup uh, goal that we set for the team they're cheering for each other so that their teammates hit the goal um you know we always do kind of situationals at the end of practice where I'll make up a scenario that we're playing, you know, the Kentucky Cats, second grade state champions. And, um, you know, 
one of our <laughs> players got fouled and they, you know, they're, they're wanting them to, to make the, the, the free throws, you know? So I think you have to build um, a team environment and have them achieve together. So. No, and, and, and it sounds like that's a really big part of, of what you do is kind of have the, those goals, but kind of have like, you, you said a, a lot of like, goal setting but like competitions in a really fun way where they, they it all seems like they're all encouraging each other and all like kind of working towards a common goal and i think that that's that's something that that seems to from from the way that you're describing it just build like a lot of just camaraderie and, and also like positivity with, with those kind of activities that you do yeah i mean i think that that all translates because how you practice um how you the the team will feed off of your energy as a coach, especially these young ones. So you've got to bring a lot of enthusiasm. I've never been a fan of, um, you know, uh, competition and running as as the reward and the punishment for losing. And just I, so I kind of like to have them shoot to, you know, get that Gatorade or the basketball cards. Um, and have it be positive, have it be enthusiastic, um, you know, always clapping your hands, always giving your teammates five, you know, picking up your teammate. Those things are so important. And I think, unfortunately, sometimes kind of lost in the game anymore. But um, you'll find that the really successful teams, you know, they do they they do that. They are a team. Um, so it's it's important. Yeah. And as coaches, we we are responsible for bringing that enthusiasm. And sometimes they look at me like, man, coach or coach had, you know, too much coffee today or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's we <laughs> well, got to get them got to get them pumped. You got to get them excited about the game. So, um and and yeah. I think to that point is is like you mentioned about the the excitement that you have because there are so many other options for for kids to be doing and and of course as you mentioned we, we want our kids to be active and doing a lot of things but I, I i imagine as as a youth coach one of one of your main main goals or main hopes is that the player is going to keep playing after you and they're going to keep loving the game and they're going to keep playing and i think one of the easiest ways to kind of build that love is is to be a coach that is super excited and super passionate about it that that you kind of infuse that passion to to your players in return yeah, no, that's also a good point. I mean, not only do you have the other sports, which is great, but something that I've noticed is even at this age, um, you know, there are so many basketball teams. There are, yeah, you oh, know, sure. one on every yeah. corner. And, you know, there are some players and some some families who, you know, they, they want to play on four different teams or, you know, if, if, you know, they're not getting out what they need out of your team, they're going to switch to that team. And, you know, I, that's ultimately okay with me because if my philosophy of um, team and, you know, or team expectations doesn't jive with what a family needs, that's perfectly fine. But mm -hmm. of course you want to, you know, keep your players, you want them to be happy. You want, um, uh, you know, them to have a good experience. Um, so, you know, yeah, I bring a lot of enthusiasm. I want it to be fun. I want it to be unique and, you know, them to think back, like that was a really good time having basketball, but it's also competitive. I think the two go hand in hand. Sure. No, a absolutely. Especially kind of at the, at the level of, of basketball that you're uh, coaching at specifically. And, and that kind of made me thinking about how do you, define success in terms of teaching teaching basketball skills so you're working with 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 eight year olds and and they're 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 pretty high level so what what do you feel as a coach you need to to kind of be teaching them or working with them so that they're that much better by the time they they turn 9 years old and and get get to third grade well the the emphasis of our team in the first hour of our practice every single practice is dedicated to fundamentals 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 and you know it, ball handling might not be the the most fun thing i i think i've found some drills that are really fun um, for the kids but it, it, the fact of the matter is is they have to be able to handle the ball they have to be able to finish properly with footwork n their layups. You know, they need to know that you need to hit the, the top right and left hand corner on layups and finish. They need to know proper defensive stance 
and that it's played with your feet. It's played by sliding your feet, um, you know, a drop step. I'm trying to teach them team uh, defense, man-to-man concepts, help side uh, denial on the ball. Um, you know, so all of those fundamentals are absolutely critical. And that's kind of my measuring stick. And I'm not going to take my foot off of the gas on the fundamentals because at eight years old, nine years old, 10 mm-hmm. years old, there's college teams, you know, it, it, successful ones, and they're still focusing on fundamentals. So, um, you know, that is our our focus. Of course, I would love for us to run an offense. They need to learn how to run an offense. We run a five out offense um, because at second grade, we, you know, you really don't have <laughs> post players yet. They're all kind <laughs> of that uh, guards. And so that that's been a good offense for us because they can, you know, play all five positions. But, um, you know, we work on more of the specific stuff, uh, plays, sets um at the latter half of practice but it's all focused on fundamentals and i think how do you measure that one thing as i was kind of thinking through um important things that i've learned and as a player this was critical and it was watching game film um you know not always fun but you Mm -hmm. learn so much by watching what you did and um you know, there's just really no substitute for it. And as a coach, I think that that's really important as well because how we remember a game going or things that we think we didn't do very well or things that we thought we did really well, we might be surprised when we go back and watch the game film. And that is, I can't stress that enough because there have been times where I'm like, man, we worked on ball rotation, ball rotation, ball rotation, and we're just not rotating the ball and then I went back and watched some game film and I'm like wow we actually are doing it um you know or I'll I'll pick up yeah you'll pick up that they're the you know full court ball handling the moves that we work on change direction change speed they're they're doing it and I can see it I mean I can see things that we work on in practice and so it's so that's really important and I think it's a great measuring stick so if you can find a parent or someone to help you while you're coaching and um, get some you know clips of your games or um, videotape some of it that is a great I can't stress how important it is yeah, I, it, it's funny. I think at, at all levels, even at youth level, middle school, high school, collegiate and above, like like film is, is just so invaluable. Like I think every coach has said that. And it's, it's even at a youth level, it's still incredibly, incredibly valuable. I know it is. Yeah. And it, it there's one thing I was thinking of mm-hmm. um, when <laughs> this is it wasn't game film, but. I had mentioned we were in a tournament. It was our, uh, this was just two weeks ago and it was our first tournament where full court press was allowed the whole game. And um, we had, we struggled our, our press break. We, we just really wanted to dribble through double teams and, you know, it, it sure. wasn't working and we had worked on it, but we had put a lot of time into it. So we were just trying to get some good, uh, you know, game reps so we could see what we needed to work on. And in between our first and second game, there was a group of sixth grade boys that were playing, very talented group. And both teams were pressing. Both teams were doing a great job beating the press. And I had my kids sit in the stands and watch and take mental notes so we could talk about it, count the passes watch where they cut after they pass the ball. You know, somebody was flashing middle. Did they even put the ball on the floor or do they just pivot? (laughs) And then the sides were filling the lanes. And you could see the lights going off in their heads. And I had one of the parents, um, we actually did so much better the second game. And it just dawned on me, they needed to see it. You sure. know, yeah. I'm actually a visual learner myself and, you know, explaining it, going over it in practice, running it in practice, trying to do it in a game. Those are all great. We have to do all those things. But, you know, you are you might have players who really need to see something. So where we can send your parents or, you know, if you're, if you're coaching youth and you have like a team app or, you know, a, a, a parent text chain, send them a video of a five out offense, send them a video of, um, 
you know, whatever concept it is you're trying to teach and say, hey, can you share this with your kid Mm -hmm. and have them watch it? Because it, it, one of the parents said when he saw it, it clicked. And I was like, well, sure, I am missing that step. So I've been trying (laughs) to supplement, you know, everything we're doing in practice with a little video, um, you know, to show the kids and because, you know, they, that might just be what somebody needs, one of your players, so that it makes sense what you're saying. So, yeah, yeah, no, ab- absolutely. And that it's, it's also, I, I found, and, and sometimes this just helps uh, for some of my players, even if it's just, it it's helpful sometimes for my players to just almost see it or even hear it from somebody like other than me. I think sometimes yes. if they see somebody else do it or other than do it, like it, it, it's just sometimes some players just clicks a little bit different. Just have somebody else explain it to them, maybe it or see it in in a way that uh, is maybe where they can be removed from it. And and yeah, no, yes. I, I, think, I think that's that's super helpful. That that is so true. Yes, very good point. I, I am super curious about how you remain patient when teaching some of these concepts and, and knowing that at, especially at such a young age, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be, you know, concepts that don't, don't click, or there's going to be things that um, don't go necessarily the way that you like. How how do you kind of keep your patience and, 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 and kind of in, in a sense, rein yourself in to make sure that you're not being too overly harsh or too overly critical and, and, and being, you know, the, the coach that's willing to, you know, give them some grace, especially considering their age. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's, you've got to, um, I think you have to just approach everything with an an instructor um, type, you know, personality. I, I, I try not to, I I don't baby them um, and I am hard on them and I do have, you know, certain expectations. And and I think I mentioned before, effort is one thing that, um, you know, you've, they've got to give top effort you know if if not then we have other players who who can play in the game and they can take a seat for a minute get a drink of water and then you know we'll give them another try but um you know just making mistakes it's okay I don't I try to you know leave them in the game when when that happens I don't want to pull somebody out shake their confidence because they made a mistake because that's basketball and I think I say this probably every week to them basketball is such a fast game that you can't sit and worry about a turnover because you have to get back and defend or we're going to get scored on so you have to be able to be um, mentally tough and it sounds kind of well, geez, you say that to eight-year-olds? Well, I do <laughs> just because I want them to know that, you know, that's such a huge component of it that you have to have grace with yourself. I'm not mad at you if you're trying. We we want to always be improving, but but you can't sit and, you know, get down on yourself or, you know, complain because you think you got fouled. I've had a couple of my little guys that, you know, <laughs> they think they got fouled and they sit there on the floor and, you know, they're tapping their arm and looking at, and no, no, we're not going to do that. We have to get up. You have to help your team. You have to get back because what you don't want is for one mistake to compound into another. So that's where you have to be very mentally tough and just let it go let it go. It's okay. It's okay to make a mistake. We're all learning, but you have to, you know, move on and you have to move on fast because you just don't have the time to sit and worry about it. Um, So I think you just got to have a positive attitude. You got to encourage them. You got to let them know that making those mistakes is okay. And we're all here to learn. Um, But I do think that taking a hard line with effort, you know, Obviously, if they're not feeling well or something like that, I'm not sure. talk- talking about those situations. But, you know, if they're just, you know, mad, you know, so-and-so's taking all the shots, like, you know, we're no, we're not going to do that kind of stuff. So you kind of have to know when to be a little bit of a harder um, presence as a coach and then know when, you know, just a mistake and they're trying, but they're just not there yet or they don't know, um, you know, but – we when we were working uh, against the full court press, my players didn't know you could run the baseline, you know, sure, um, yeah. after after a made shot. Yeah. They've never done that before, you know, and um, 
just complete confusion and that's okay. You know, <laughs> I mean, we're pushing ourselves to, to become better basketball players. And sometimes we're pushing ourselves a little bit harder at a faster pace and we're going to make more mistakes. Um, but then when we come back to, you know, a second grade team or, um, you know, we're not pressing, it, it seems a lot slower. I know we're making progress and I know they can feel that too. So you just got to keep encouraging them and know when maybe a little bit more tough love is appropriate um, if it's kind of an effort or an attitude thing. Yeah, and I'm sure part of that is, is kind of getting to know the know the players as well. And even at a young age, you you can probably identify you know which players you 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 may need to approach a little bit differently and 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 kind of understand the the language that they need to be spoken to. Yeah, I mean that is a wonderful point. They are all obviously different people, very very different people, and that is something that I am learning what makes them tick, <laughs> what motivates them, mm-hmm. what, how do they, you know, do they respond to maybe a more like aggressive approach with the, with the coach or do they, do they know and they don't, you know, um, they, they, they want to be talked to after, you know, they've gotten to the bench and I have a chance to come back to it. You know, there's just different approaches and, you have to know your team and and um, take the time to learn to get to know your kids. And that's kind of goes into the point I was making earlier with learning styles. You can kind of figure out um, what clicks with different kids and and how they learn a little bit better. And, um, you know, some, some of my kids just absolutely have taken to I, I'll take out my coaching board at the end of practice. And if we've learned a new set or play or a defensive set, I'll, I'll have them be the coach and they, mm-hmm. this team sits down and they will draw it and they love that. Um, so you just kind of have to figure out what makes them tick and, you know, different combinations of kids work better together. And um, yeah, so there's a, it's a lot, it's a lot for yeah. a coach, even at the, the younger level. And I, I mean, if, if, if you want to, do a thorough job. So, um, you know, but take the time to do that. And it's honestly, it's as much of a reward for me to get to know the kids. I'm I'm sure. Yeah. I hope it is, you know, for them. Um, but yeah, they are, they're awesome kids. And, and you mentioned, uh, uh, about the the success criteria and kind of the way that, that you you defined it and kind of break it down with, with your players about, you know, what success will look like and, and, and goal setting. Uh, is, is that, kind of the same success criteria that you kind of use when you reflect on like the job that you've done, or is it like a little bit different in terms of for you as a coach, when you kind of sit back and reflect on whether or not, you know, the game or the weekend or the tournament was successful, like what, it, what is your success criteria? Is it the same as, as the one that you tell the players or does yours look any different at all? Oh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think I will always, let the players know what our goal is going Mm -hmm. into the game. So if there's, and like I mentioned, there's always something specific that I really want us to work on. I don't, I, you know, I really want us to work on our help side defense, our team defense, um, you know, in our full court press, we don't want anybody taking sideline on us. We want to cut that off and, and and hopefully, and you know, whatever the, the, the focus is, we really need to focus on our rebounding in this game. Um, So that, will be something that I'm going to emphasize throughout the game. Um, but yeah, there, of course, there are going to be some goals, I think, and um, uh, evaluation that I will have that I'm not going to share with them. Um, it might just, it might be specific to certain players. I want to see if, you know, this player can step up. You yeah. know, this is a um, really good matchup for, you know, a certain kid to, to step up and get more minutes. Um, and show what they can do, or this is an opportunity where I want to see these kids lead and take this team on their back, you know, offensively and see what we can do, you know, and score, or in the situation where we're playing a older, bigger, faster, stronger team, and it's going to be tough, I want to see what kids mentally stay in the game, you know, what, what kids are still fighting at these end of the game or which ones have kind of checked out and I think those are really important things um, that coaches constantly are doing evaluating their players and um, you know kind of just seeing what they want to get out of those individuals but also having the team goals and letting the team know that as well it's 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 
incredible to kind of hear you talk about how you know even even at a youth level all, all these all these things that you talked about like the success criteria and the goals like that's it's it's so incredible to hear it because it's i think it's so similar to how many you know middle high school and even maybe even collegiate programs are run and kind of shows you even at, at a youth level when 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 kids are playing at a, at, a, at a high level even at a young age how much how much really goes into this uh, the coaching and the playing side Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I think there's a lot of similarities and I, I want, if anything, I want the kids to enjoy playing basketball and I want them to be prepared. You know, I want them to, uh, you know, know what it's like to be part of a team. And I hope that I can instill the great things that I've learned from my coaches along the way in them. Um, you know, that's kind of I, my coaching style is literally to pick up the best things that I can from the best coaches that mm -hmm. I'm exposed to, you know, the ones that shaped me throughout my playing career. And unfortunately, I've had some that, I, you know, I'm like, I never want to coach like so that. Some non-examples. You know? Yeah. Right. So, um, and, you know, if, if they stick with me my whole life, of course, it's going to stick with, um, you know, what we do as coaches matters, what, what we, how we treat the kids, um, what our coaching style is. And, um, sure. so, you know, it matters, you can affect a kid's life. So I, I'm, I'm going to have to, to ask probably the, the, the burning question. I'm sure that's on listeners minds about the, the interactions that come with, with parents and especially these parents that, that I'm sure you're working with have a, have a lot invested and have put in a lot of time and effort with their, with their child. So in your experience, how have you kind of engaged not just the player, but also, also the parents as well to make sure that like everybody is having a positive experience and, and getting what they want out of it? Yes, it's, it's an important question and it's a really important thing for youth coaches. Um, I, I will preface my answer by saying I think we're in a kind of a dark age of youth sports, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Um, you know, just some of the things that I've seen and, um, you know, read. And it, it's very hard to get coaches, um, people that want to coach and, and be subjected sometimes to what, the, you know, they – will experience with parents it's hard to find referees <laughs> they're 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 taking a lot off of parents but you know that I'm a parent so you know I'm not I'm not knocking anyone um but it is it is a consideration that youth coaches need to have and I think the bit of advice that's been really helpful for me is you need to give a lot of consideration to what your team goals objectives and rules are before the season starts, I took a good chunk of time and wrote that out. I, I typed up a document of what, you know, all the details that would be important to parents, you know, costs, what the schedule is going to look like, when the practices are going to be, um, what are, you know, if you're in a league where equal playing time is not a requirement, um, well, you need to let the parents know that, you mm -hmm. know, um, and how the, the kid earns playing time well, or, you know, what, what is playing time? What is your philosophy on that? Is it something that's earned and your goal is to get every kid playing time, but it might not always be equal? Well, you need to let the parents know that. Um, do you want your kids at games, you know, 15 to 30 minutes in advance? And that's what being on time is. Well, then you need to level set and let the parents know that. Um, if you have a zero tolerance for um, unsportsmanlike conduct by your players and your parents, you need to let them know that. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> you need to yeah. do it in writing. And it, even if there are team or uh, league rules and you're like, well, the league rules are out there, they know. Don't take that for granted. Make your own document of your own philosophy of what your goals are for the season. Make it um, personal. You know, yeah. yeah, make it personal. And then – I distribute it to the parents. We have a meeting of the parent with the parents before the season starts. And I go through every item on that list. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't want a parent approaching um, you, you know, you as a coach about playing time or another issue while you're at a game, let the parents know that give them your phone number and say, Hey, text me if you have an issue and we'll find a time to, to discuss it. 
Um, cause you know, I've seen parents come into huddles like you're at the end oh, of the yeah, game. Oh yeah, I've seen that. You know, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> just kind of, but I think if you do that and you explain where you're going and what you level set with your, with your parents mm-hmm. and your players and they know where you are and what your, you know, team goals, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to be happy. I mean, you can't keep everybody happy and we're all human. We might make mistakes during the season, but at least if there is some sort of an issue with one of the team rules that you have or expectations, you can talk with that parent and say, hey, do you remember our team rules and expectation document that we talked about in the team meeting? Well, this, uh, you know, was, you know, when you yelled at the ref and were, you know, ejected from the game, that was not what what uh bolts basketball is about you know and then what is the consequence of that well maybe they get another chance maybe it's happened more than once and unfortunately you know you can't have that uh you know those folks on the team because they're not you know they're 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 not uh you know coinciding with that environment that you're trying to to create and you know i think we might especially at the youth level you might be enticed to bend you know well i really want johnny johnny's the best player on the east side of columbus and i just if i get johnny it's just going to be the best you know season but i i just don't think that that's ever going to work you cannot bend for one player um and or put you know one you know one above the team it's got to be the team and you got to find parents who have bought into that and i'm so fortunate with the group that i have um, that we just are all on that same page. And it's been a really good experience. Um, will it always be, will this always be the perfect fit for everybody? No, probably mm-hmm. not. And that's okay. You know, people should do what's best for their child. And, you know, as a coach, you got to do what's best for your team. But um, I think as long as you're willing to have those conversations and willing to be a leader and set forth those expectations, um, things will be a lot smoother and give the, give the parents a, a, an opportunity to digest that information. Say, Hey, let me, let me know by, you know, 48 hours from now, if this is something that you want to be part of, right. Let them think about it. Let them talk about it. I had a parent this season who took home the, the, the information and had a ton of questions for me. And that's okay, because I want to make sure that that is, it's a good experience for them. And that's what they're looking for, for their kid. Yeah. Some of these folks were kind of on the fence. Do I really want to put my kid in travel ball at eight years old? I don't know. I want to know more about this. I want to know like what, you know, and I'm okay with that. I would prefer that. Big investment. Uh, parents, yeah. yeah. Parents ask me, um, you know, before they, you know, so that the you know, they know what to expect. And so I think that is so important. Yeah. And I, I think the, 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 the takeaway I really get from, from, from your response is, you know, be proactive and, and get out ahead on these things so that it's clear before any potential issue arrives, you really want to have that conversation early, it seems. And I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Be a leader, be a leader. I mean, that's, that's really what a coach is. And, um, you know, it's it's coming up with a plan. It's having a vision. It's being able to communicate that, and it's being mm-hmm. able to enforce it. And it's it's important at any age. And you, it really at these younger ages, um, you know, it, it is important. And a lot of it's going to come down to you know playing time and, and whatnot. So you know, be careful. You know, if you're <laughs> If that's yeah. if it's not your intention that you're subbing every five minutes and it's always going to be equal and you're starting different, you know, you're not starting a different lineup or or whatever, you know, just be upfront with with that's not that what this team is, you know. Yeah. I yeah. do try to, especially at this age, select kids that I see playing. Um, you know, I I and they all have, they all have played every game, um, you know, and that's, you know, not every team yeah. we play is like that. And it's not all, it's not equal minutes, but um, I did try to, to select kids that I knew could contribute and I saw strengths in them, strengths that, you know, that they would be getting reps because at eight years old, I, you know, yeah, I so want important. them to get, you know, 
reps. So yeah, no, yeah, they they got to be playing, and that's that's the whole point. <laughs> is you they they didn't put all this work in just to not play and just to sit there and not do anything and come game right. time. So yeah, um, I wanted to ask before we got to our concluding segment about um, what advice would you give to a coach, a youth coach in particular, who is going to be coaching but also coaching their kid as well. Uh, and that balance between being a coach who's coaching your child and then also like you're, you're, you're the parent as well. What, what advice would you give to a coach who might be coaching their, their child for the first time? I love this question because it, let's face it, it applies to most, most youth coaches in every sport, right? <laughs> yeah, a yeah. lot of us are parents and that's, you know, how we have gotten into it. So this is just an absolutely great question. And it's one that is, it is a challenge. I mean, I, I'm not going to tell um, anybody out there that coaching your own kid is easy. We have this, I think we're all human. So we kind of have this innate um, sense that we, you know, we don't want to face for our kid and then we can kind of almost tilt to the opposite end of the spectrum and we're harder on our kid and I was at a coaching clinic this past um, winter and um, they had a speaker and the, he he gave a speech and it, and, and it was on this topic and mm -hmm. I had never heard somebody address it in this way and I, I wish I could remember his exact words but it had a profound impact on me because he said you know to those of you who are coaching your own kid do not be harder or expect more or somehow make the experience different for your kid because they deserve a chance to they deserve a chance to play basketball you know just like any of the other kids on the team and it, it shouldn't be, you know, harder just because they're the coach's kid. And, you know, that really resonated uh -huh. with me because a lot of times, you know, um, you know, I, I've even said it myself. I expect you to be the example, you know, like yeah, you're going to be the example. You know, you need to be the example. You want to be the first in line. Like I need you to, you know, pay attention and, and, and you know, execute the things that I'm saying because if you don't then the rest of the and it's like that pressure is not something that we should put on our own kid just because they're our own kid give them a chance to you know co try to coach them like you're coaching any other kid um you know and don't you know make it harder just because they're your your son or daughter and I think that that's something that I've really tried to keep in mind um and I'm very mindful of um you know, letting my, my own kid have his own experience. Yes, I'm his mom and yes, I'm coaching. Um, but it, you know, let him enjoy it too. He shouldn't take on more of a pressure because he's the coach's kid. So, um, yeah, no, that's, I, that, I, that's great. And I, I've heard, I've heard similar, I've heard sim similar sentiments said about that. I, I I've heard before, you know, people talking to, to parents who are going to be coaching for the first time that like, you don't, yeah, they, some parents, you know, they like you said that there's there's this. Uh, I don't know if it's even even an insecurity, but almost like I got to show like how great of a parent I am because of how tough and you know the the standards I'm going to hold to my kid to, and everyone around me is going to know how great of a parent I am because of you know the example I, I'm going to is you know have my kids set for the whole team, and and that's 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 maybe a little too much pressure that a kid shouldn't. It be is. It's a lot of pressure. I mean, and then I think you could have the other end of the spectrum too, which. I, I kind of feel like it goes without saying, but then again, you see it all the time. And I think it's, it's often referred to as daddy ball. And, you know, so you, obviously you got to be mindful too. <laughs> and yeah, I guess not to favor yeah. your kid. I would probably, I'm going to be on the other end of the spectrum, but I mean that obviously, you know, try to be in the middle of, of those two, um, you know, I guess extremes of making the example and the pressure and then, you know, favoring your kid. And I just try to keep, you know, he's a player on the team. And if, if he makes mistakes, you know, he's going to come out like other kids are going to come out. If he's, um, you know, playing hard, you know, he's, he's staying in and, um, you know, it's, there's really no, um, I don't, tr I try not to treat him any differently. Um, I think that goes into like the, the parent meeting and laying out the expectations of everything. And, and like, that's, you know, by going and do, having that, beforehand it's has your 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 own kid 
held to the same standard as everyone else and everybody knows what it is and there is no like guesswork or worry about favoritism or anything like that. Absolutely. And that is a great point because I, you know, I've, I've had discussions with my son before about, you know, you know, what our team rules are. And I think that's really important. Ask your parents to read over the team rules with the kids. Obviously they need to know them too. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if he gets upset, uh, you know, he thinks he was fouled. And do you remember what are, we don't act like that. We're champions on and off the court. We, yeah. we have good sportsmanship. We treat our refs with respect, you know, that's in our team rules. And just like I would with any of the kids. So, um, you know, I, I go over the plays just like I hope, you know, little videos that I post for the parents to review with their kids. I do that with him as well. You know, I, I let him draw and diagram out what we've learned in practice so that oh, he's awesome. not just I'm not, you know, skipping his turn. So it's important. Yeah, no, that that, that that's great. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I was able to to get your thoughts on that. Awesome. Uh, to wrap up, Coach, there's a couple of questions that I ask uh, every guest. So go ahead and get started with this first one here, which is. Uh, thinking back on on your coaching experience, what is a, a coaching moment of yours that you think others listening would be able to learn from? Um, you know, that that uh, moment that comes to mind is one that I referenced earlier mm -hmm. about um, and just from two weeks ago about me having this epiphany that kids need to see um they need to see it, whatever you're instructing them on. Sometimes just showing them or doing it in practice isn't going to be enough. And when my kids actually got to see ball rotation, um, patience and composure in beating a press, um, it really clicked with them. So I think, um, you know, it's just we you always be thinking of new ways to try to show them, to teach them. Um, you know, find a clip. I think you brought up a great point. Sometimes it helps to hear it from someone else or someone else. Another coach might explain it better, um, not better, but just different in, and in a different way. Yeah. It, yeah. And it resonates with them. So uh, that, uh, that really stuck out to me because I was like, wow, um, I have got to show, especially with these young kids. Um, you know, they're probably not, some of them watch, you know, some MBA and maybe mm -hmm. some college, but they're probably not studying basketball all the time. And they're certainly not necessarily going to know what they're looking for. So um, I, I, that's something that I have just started doing and I think it's really helpful. Yeah. And, and it's, it's great because there's so many opportunities now for kids to just learn by seeing and everything. And there's, there's so much out there that they can, you can show them and hopefully that'll keep paying off for you. I think, I think that's awesome. Yes. Yes. Awesome. To wrap up, Coach, I give every guest what I kind of call a 60-second soapbox, but I, I I won't time you, so don't worry if you go over 60 <laughs> seconds, but it's your uh, platform kind of to get out kind of a final message, a final thought, a, a closing idea, and, and you are welcome to take it any which way or any direction that you want, completely open to, to your discretion. So I'm just going to kind of go and uh, g give you the floor, Coach, and I'm just going to kind of let you take it from here. Thank you. I, I will try. I'm pretty verbose. So I'll oh, no worries. That's I'll why there's no it. timer. <laughs> Go um, ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it, it's just the main themes that I've I've been discussing today um, are the the best bits of advice. Um, be a leader. Be a leader. That is what we are supposed to do as coaches. So um, be a clear communicator. Be mindful of what it is that your team goals are and be able to communicate those and keep reinforcing them. Um, you know, secondly, be a student of the game. I mean, we can all learn. Even the best coaches out there, I'm sure, are continue to learn. So we're, you know, approaching the summer basketball season. I'm sure there's camps, you know, all over uh, America, the college camps, high school camps, whatever. If if some of your players or your, your sons or daughters are going to camps, go to the camp and sit in the stands and observe, you know, these coaches who do it for a living and see if you can't pick up something new. I guarantee you will leave, um, you know, learning a, a new way to do a different drill or a, a, a different way to explain a concept. And um, that I can't stress how important it is to be a student of the game. And I think the last thing and you could probably tell is bring bring the enthusiasm. Um, you know, teams are going to feed off of the energy that you 
bring. And that's kind of the same thing um, for anything in life, right? And parenting, our careers. Um, but yeah, you know, as a coach as well, you know, you know, bring the enthusiasm and your team will follow suit. Bring the positive attitude and your team will follow suit. And I think that that's, um, you know, that's going to be invaluable for your players to have that, that enthusiasm um, the whole way through. Coaches like that kind of thing all the way through. They want to see that kid who's a competitor, who loves it, who wants to do the next rep, who, you know, you can't get them out of the gym. Bring that enthusiasm. So, um you know, there's a wealth of of uh, resources at our fingertips. We really are lucky. Um, so just, you know, bring all of your energy to it. And I think you're going to get a lot of great things out of your team. Awesome. That, that was great. Re really well said and, and love, love the energy part. I know some days are harder than others to bring that energy, but uh, yeah, our, our players need it. And uh, especially at the youth level to, to always be bringing that excitement. So, so that's great. Uh, Coach Kern, I want to thank you for coming on here, talking about your experience coaching in a, in a very interesting, very unique situation, coaching uh, not just youth players, but coaching youth players at, at a relatively high level and everything that goes on with that. Um, I'm really excited to kind of follow along and continue seeing where your journey goes with you and, and, and keep it up with uh, all the cool things that, that your team and your players are doing. So uh, thanks again and, and best of luck going forward. It sounds like you're doing an awesome job. Well, it doesn't just sound like, I know you are, you're doing great. So <laughs> keep, keep thank it up, you coach. so thank much. You. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. This was another edition of the basketball teacher podcast, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Make sure to connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, or reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.